Hello everyone, welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Wednesday, August 11th, and the year is 2021. This is a YouTube live streaming event. Whether you are watching me live or you are here watching the replay, I am so glad that you're here. And for those of you that are brand new to my channel, welcome. Thrilled that you could be here with me. Now, a couple housekeeping items before we get started. First, you're gonna be able to find a link down in the video description below when the live stream is all over tonight. That's gonna to navigate you over to a project sheet. And on that project sheet, you're gonna be able to find all the cutting dimensions, multiple pictures for the project I'm going to share with you tonight, as well as a list of supplies. So I wanna make sure you know about that so you can head over and get it. There's also a template in that tutorial that I wanna make sure that you download. You can either print it or save it to your computer to make it very, very convenient for yourself. Now, I wanna go over a couple housekeeping items with you before we get started. First, I would like to introduce you to Gina curcio Holly. You'll see her name here in blue. She is my YouTube moderator and she is also my daughter. She holds the title of the Sales and Marketing Director here at Lisa Stamp Studio and she has been stamping since she's been five years old. She is more than versed in being able to answer your questions about stamping up products as well as provide you some much needed links. Honestly, friends, I would love to chat with every single one of you, but it's impossible to keep up with the live chat and stamp at the same time. So that's why Gina is here to help. And then finally, we would love to chat with you, but in order to do so, you're gonna to need to log into your YouTube account. That is your Gmail address. That is a requirement of YouTube and not of Lisa Stamp Studio. So make sure that you log in so that you can leave a comment here during the replay or comment during the live chat. I think we're ready. I'm gonna go ahead and get you all situated. Here we go. I wanna to talk to you very quickly about the project sheet. There is an amazing project sheet I just mentioned to you and guess what? There is going to be a template for tonight's project. So I wanna make sure that I gave you a little heads up about that so that you'll be able to find that this evening when we're all done with the live stream. It is not there yet. I'm gonna be using my Stampin' Trimmer, one of my very favorite tools here in the studio because there is both a scoring blade and a cutting blade. Now the scoring blade is the lighter of the two and the cutting blade obviously is the darker one. They navigate up and down and out of the way so you can keep them on this clear track at the same time. Now I wanna point out before we get started that there are measurements here on the clear track and I realize that's probably a little difficult to see with the lighting as well as the camera and the lens angle. But I'm gonna show you that you can see them really, really well when you've got your cardstock in there and obviously when you're at home. I love this trimmer and you're gonna see why tonight. We're gonna to make a birthday card that has a step above the rest. And this, I say a step above the rest because it's gonna have a step to it. So let's go ahead and let's get started. This is a five and a half by eight and a half. And you're gonna see that I have the eight and a half inch side here on the left the five and a half inch side here at the top. I am calling this on your template, the portrait position, which means it's nice and tall. We are going to begin by lining up this left edge right here at the two and three quarter inch mark here in the trimmer. Now there's a nice straight ledge here at the top. There's also one at the bottom, which is fantastic because that means not, everything's gonna be nice and straight. I can't do anything straight. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my finger right here to kind of keep this track up and elevate it. And this is where I'm gonna navigate my cutting blade into the position. Now you're gonna see there's plenty of room to keep my fingers safe, that's very important. We are actually going to make a slit. Now you'll recall that I showed you the dimensions here, which are obviously on an angle now, which makes it difficult for you to see. But the great thing is, is I can literally line this up right where I want it and go to the measurements that I'm going to give you inside that project sheet for the template. So lining up at the two and three quarter inch mark, I'm moving my blade and there's a little indicator right here that I know you can't see because of the lighting. So I'm gonna start at the one and one quarter inch mark. So I'm lining that up right here and then I am going to close this. Now I am going to slice or drag that blade down to sixth and one eighth of an inch. And that's right about there. And then we're gonna open this up. I'm gonna take this blade now and I'm gonna navigate it down out of the way. We're done with the cutting. What we're gonna do next is we are gonna rotate the cardstock one quarter clockwise. So now it's going the long way. This now is the eight and a half inch side. And we're gonna do some scoring. Now I'm gonna go over this kind of slowly because there's one score line that's slightly different. It's not difficult, but just hang with me, okay? 
The first one we're going to measure at one and one quarters of an inch. So that's up here. And again, I'm making sure my paper is right along that ledge to make sure that it's nice and straight. Do you recall the slit we made right here? Well, guess what? You're only going to do your score line from here to there. And remember, that was at two and three quarters inches. So if you're not good at seeing it through the cardstock, I want to call your attention to this guide here. So you'll stop at two and three quarters of an inch. So here I am at one and a quarter. I'm going to slide the blade down to two and three quarters of an inch. Now I can kind of actually feel where that slit is with that scoring blade, which is going to make it really easy. Now I'm going to slide over to two inches and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're only going to come to where that slit is. So again, that's that two and three quarter inch mark. And then I'm going to open it up and we're going to do one more at three and one eighth. And I'm going to close down my arm and again to the slit line. Now this next one is slightly different because guess what? This next one's going to be at the half inch, I'm sorry, at the half mark of the cardstock, so the center. So we're going to come over to four and one quarter of an inch. This one's got to go all the way across to make that center fold of your card. So at four and a quarter, we're going to start here and then we are going to score. Now I'm going to open this. I'm going to bring my scoring blade back up and we've got one more. This time I'm going to navigate to six and one eighth. Now you'll see that I used our chalk marker and I indicated that here. And here is why. There is an arm on this trimmer that I love. Look, it goes past 17 inches, which means you're not going to have to worry about getting anything to fit. It's going to fit famously. The six and one eighth actually has indications here in person. I know you can see them better if you were here, but I know that it's literally right here at that black edge is the six and one eighth. Now again, we're only gonna go up to that cut line. So that's the two and three quarter inch. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna score all the way down to two and three quarter inch, and then we're gonna open it. That's it. Now that, while that might seem kind of confusing, I promise you it's super duper simple. All right, what you're gonna have left is you're gonna have a series of score lines, a slit, and one score line that goes all the way across the center. So let's go ahead and work on this. Now I want to make sure that you know that you can flip this around so that your step for this fun fold card could be on the opposite side. So keep in mind that now is a great time to be able to invert your card base if you want to make a change. I'm going to have mine go on this side tonight and I'm going to start here at the very bottom. This is that first score line that was at one and one quarter inch and we're going to make this one come up. Now this is what we call a mountain fold because it comes to a peak. This next one's going to go down. That's what we call a valley fold. I'm trying to see if I scored it pretty good. I was kind of thinking I didn't score that pretty tight, but I've got another one just in case. And then the next one's going to come down. So kind of like an accordion. So you see how the steps are coming together? And this last one is going to come down. This one is going to come like this. Now I'm going to try to just wrangle my cardstock so you can see it. Do you see how we've accordion sized this? And now we've got the base here. So all we're going to do is kind of give it a little bit of a squish. And this is where your bone folder is going to come into play. I'm going to move you guys in a little bit closer, I think, so you can see a little bit better. All right, I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to go over those nice crisp creases here. And I'm just going to reinforce those score lines. I am also going to do the inside here as well. One thing about making a fun fold is you want to make sure that you're taking your time and you've got all those score lines nice and crisp so that your card can stand up. This card is going to fit in a medium A2 size envelope, but I want to show you here just a little visual from the top and the side how this is going to work. Now here comes the fun part. We're going to decorate it and I'm going to give you some other ideas on how you're going to use this. Now let me set this to the side for just a moment and I'm going to come over to a die that I've fallen in love with. That's this one. This comes from a die set called Tailor Made Tags. Now, all I did was I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock and I die cut myself a tag and that has left me with this. Now I did do a few things ahead of time just to speed up the process just a little bit. But I find that these dies are fantastic because not only are they in cascading sizes, which means you can layer them, but also they include these little dies here for the grommets, for the opening, which is also lots and lots of fun. So let me set that off to the side and let's talk about what we're going to do here. I'm going to do a little bit of stamping here but I know that I don't do things straight, so I'm going to turn it sideways. And I'd like to use my grid paper again because I can't do things straight. I'm gonna pull out an ink pad that's called Just Jade, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this up, and I am going to take 
a little stem. And I know you're probably thinking, that's a stem? Well, yeah, it is, because it's coming from the stamp set called In Symmetry. I think this is one of those stamp sets in the annual catalog with Stampin' Up! that is well overlooked. And I'm excited to share this card plus six other fun folds with you this evening. So make sure you stay with me. So I'm going to be using this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink up what's going to be the stem. And I'm going to concentrate this a little bit here nor the bottom. And I'm looking to try to make it centered. So there we go. Now I've got my stamp and scrub just off camera and I just realized that I didn't wet it. So let me go ahead and spray that really quick. That's probably what you're hearing. Sorry about that. You know, the one thing about being live, you just never know what's going to happen, right? All right. So that takes care of that. Now I'm gonna set this off to the side for just a second, but I'm gonna make some flowers and I'm gonna do that on a separate piece of white cardstock. Now we're gonna do a couple fun things with this stamp set. There are lots of pieces that you can use in a variety of ways. And the great thing about this is wait until you see the other six cards that I'm gonna share with you because it's gonna show you a myriad of ways to use these stamps. Let's start with the leaves. Aren't these fun and very much abstract? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink those up in the Just Jade and we're gonna stamp those up here. Okay, so we've got that. And I'm gonna move over now to another set of leaves. And you're gonna to wanna to make yourself a couple of these. Well, just for the sake of the video, we're gonna stamp just a couple of those. And I've got some of those done ahead of time. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna switch over to another color. This time I'm going to use the Bumblebee ink. This is a really fun, like mustardy yellow. I really, really love this one. And you're gonna notice this flower, it really just looks like half of a bloom, doesn't it? But watch what we're gonna do. We are gonna ink this up in the Bumblebee ink. I'm making sure I have good coverage. And I love this because it's photopolymer, which means that the stamp is actually going to turn the color of the ink. We are going to stamp that here. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna ink it up one more time. And you're gonna see I'm traveling everywhere. We all have a tendency to wanna to ink up our stamps only in the center, don't we? But remember, there's ink all the way around here. If you ever notice that the center of your ink pads tends to be a little bit lighter, that's because you'd like to gravitate right here. So don't be afraid to travel. Pick up all that ink. We are going to turn that paper. Now, at the risk of not trying to get my head in your camera, I'm gonna move you in even, even closer. And I am looking to align this area right here. And I'm trying not to get my head in your camera, but at my age, that is tough because your head's got to be close. But here we go. And what I'm doing is I've actually connected those to make a full bloom. Now, my ink pad is super duper juicy. And as that ink starts to evaporate, it's going to allow me a better opportunity to get a better image for you. But let me go over and let's talk about some of the other flowers that we're going to be using on this card tonight. I'm going to switch over next to... Poppy Parade, one of my favorite colors. It's such a happy color. Another bloom from that stamp set. So we're gonna ink this up as well. And then we're gonna stamp one and let's do two for this one, two. The great thing about this card is you're gonna be able to use any stamp set whatsoever and any theme whatsoever. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this up and let's move over to one more color because in my life, all the colors make me happy. Keep in mind, monochromatic cards are amazing as well. And this time I'm gonna use that same bloom. I just cleaned my stamp off camera. Now you might notice it has a little bit of a pink tone to it, doesn't it? And the reason for that is because photopolymer will have a tendency to pick up the pigmentation from these darker color stamps. This does not hurt your stamp as long as your stamp has been cleaned and dried. It just stains it, so it does not hurt the performance. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink this up as well, and I'm gonna stamp that one here. Now I am gonna do a little bit more stamping, and I'm gonna bring in that Bumblebee ink one more time. I have a habit of closing my ink pads along the way because I have a tendency of wearing them. Anybody else with me? <laughs> I have a tendency to get them all over my hands and then it gets all over my project. So I just close them up as I go. This little tulip is what I'm calling it. Again, a very abstract, kind of bohemian type of look. So I'm gonna stamp a couple of those, one and two. All right, we've got our pieces. That's all done, that's the fun part, right? Well, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about fussy cutting. Now, I know some of you are thinking, oh, no way, don't tell me there isn't dies for this stamp set. The answer is no, there are not dies, but I do wanna to talk to you about this because I think oftentimes we forget the simple things. As paper crafters, we become really spoiled, haven't we, with dies? But cutting is something we've learned really in elementary school. Now, I wanna give you a couple tips. 
I did cut out all of these ahead of time. You're not going to watch me, so don't worry about that. But a lot of people tell me that they're not quite sure how to cut out an image. So I'm just going to walk you through the process here. And again, I'm going to bring you in just a little bit closer so you can see a little bit better. The secret is not to cut on the stamped line. You want to keep a little bit of white cardstock all the way around. And quite frankly, none of us cuts perfectly. So you're just going to do the very best that you can. If this is going to be mounted on a white background, guess what? It's even more forgiving. So if you have areas like this that are thicker and areas that are thinner, you have no reason to be concerned. It's going to not show. It really isn't. Now, keep in mind too that when you have your dies, they're going to leave that same type of border. So just try to mimic that. That's going to make it a lot simpler for you. All right, so I'm going to put that one off to the side and let's bring in my cut pieces. This is the magic of being live and I prepared these ahead of time for you. So we've got some pieces here. Now I did do quite a few because that's me. I love detail. I love color. Keep in mind this can be as simple as you'd like. So let's talk about how we're going to first embellish this tag. All right, so I've got that here, and you'll remember that I made this full flower. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach that to here, and I'm gonna be using dimensionals for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab myself a couple dimensionals, and I'm gonna place them so they don't fall outside of the perimeter of the tag. So I'm gonna concentrate here in the center. So I'm gonna do here and here. If you want to make sure that it's really well balanced, you can go ahead and add a couple more if you'd like. I'm gonna be using my take your pick tool. I cannot live without this tool. There's a putty end, which is gonna help you pick up small pieces of paper and sequence. And then there are interchangeable tips. This one is the paper piercing tool attachment, which helps my arthritic hands remove those paper backings from those sticky dimensionals. And then I'm just gonna center this here. I'm being very careful to make sure that I leave this available, because I'm gonna teach you something really fun to do with that. And do you recall that we had these leaves? Well, let's go ahead and add these as well. Now, when you go to put the dimensionals on these, you're gonna to wanna to concentrate again where it's going to fall on the cardstock, which is the tag, and of course, not on the actual base of where we're going to plant this on the stair step card. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place this one this way, leaving a little room here at the bottom. I'm gonna push these other flowers off to the side and this, because I wanna to talk to you about a small piece of ribbon. Now, I'm just cut a small piece here as a sample. I'm gonna use a piece of scrap grid paper. This is the smaller grid paper, which I love. And I decided that this needed to be colored because I thought it was a little bit too much white on white. And this is where your alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers come into play. Because of Stampin' Up's award-winning color combinations and the coordination, you don't have to worry about that Poppy Parade flower not matching that Poppy Parade marker and cardstock and so on. So what I did is I decided to pull out the darker of the two shades because they come one light and one dark for coloring. So this is the darker. You'll see that the ends are labeled. So you know the size of the tip. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that darker end and watch what I'm going to do. I am not going to ruin the tip of my marker. So I'm holding my marker sideways and I am going to run this right across my ribbon. Now this ribbon is a seam binding, so you're gonna see when I turn it over that it actually bleeds through to the other side, which means it's gonna color both sides at the same time. Now here's a disclaimer for you. Very important that you allow this to dry because if you don't, you're gonna have a little bit of remnants in this on your cardstock. Now I did do one ahead of time, and that's a bigger piece that's here. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in half. So I've got a little loop here at the top. The pretty front on this is actually threading it from the front to the back. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna kind of squish this up and I'm gonna take this through here and if you're struggling like me, let's go back to that tool and let's give that a little bit of a poke. We're gonna pull that through. We are gonna open up the loop. The secret to a really pretty front tag with the ribbon or the string is to string it from the front to the back. Now, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna pull both strands at the same time, because remember, you can rip the paper here in that shallow opening. So what I like to do is just take one at a time, a little on the right, a little on the left, just to pick up that tension. You are gonna to have to cut your ends just a little tiny bit to get rid of that fraying, so I'm gonna do that right now. So that'll give you a really pretty finished tag right here. Let's set this aside and let's come back to that card base that we created. So you'll recall this. What I decided to do with mine was to add some designer series paper here. And I wanna show you this paper. 
This is actually part of the same suite of products as the In Symmetry stamp set. And this is called Sweet Symmetry Designer Series Paper. And like all the Stampin' Up! papers, they are double-sided unless they are specialty papers, which means you have lots and lots of options. All the patterns in this package are double-sided with lots of colors. What I decided to do was to place that portion of that designer paper here on the right-hand side panel. So let's flip that over and I'm going to grab my adhesive. Remember to stick with me because I have six other fun fold cards to share with you tonight. They're all different. And because I run the risk of not doing things straight, I'm going to recommend that you also open up the card base. Now our creases are there, so it's going to be easy to put it back together. And you want to be sure that you're able to kind of center this the best that you can. So I'm looking at the top and the sides, and if necessary, don't even be afraid to turn it sideways, because horizontally I often have a lot better luck. All right, so now we've got this. Guess what? That is where this is going to go. And I opted to use dimensionals for this because I wanted some extra elevation to correspond with the stair step on this card. So I'm going to put my dimensionals here and here, and I'm going to add several others here and a couple in the middle. And I'll tell you why. 90% of all of my cards get mailed, and I'm very cognizant that they're going to go through the rollers at the mail meter at the post office. And I want to make sure that they come out nice and balanced and looking like I created them when they arrive at the other end. This is going to go here. Now let's talk about these stair steps. I did cut some designer series paper and I'm going to put those here, but let me show you something. Be cognizant of where you're going to put them because when the card is closed, these are the areas you're going to see. The steps are down inside. Now before I go too far and add that designer series paper, let's take this one step further. I'm going to go back to that Poppy Parade ink pad and I've pulled out the words from that same stamp set that say best day ever. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink these up and I'm going to stamp those right down here near the bottom. All right, so we've got that now on our card. I'm going to close up that ink pad just so I don't end up in it. And now we're going to add the designer series paper here. But while I'm doing that, let's talk about what else you could put inside these stair step areas. Besides the flowers that I'm going to be adding, you can add pictures, additional sentiments, and you know what? The holidays are coming. How many of you are looking for a really special and unique holiday card for family and friends? Oh, look at Lisa's getting a little zealous here with her adhesive. My Stampin' Seal Plus is very strong, and if I press too hard, mm -hmm, it's smarter than I am so that it wants to rip my paper, so I've got to be really careful. You can add small holiday photos to each of these stair steps, which would be really, really pretty and really, really clever. All right, so that's how this is all going to fold up now. This is going to come up, and this is going to come down. All right. Oh, hello. There we go. Now we're good. I'm going to give that a good push. This is where your decorations are going to go. So let's set that off to the side for just a moment. And this is just a matter of collaging. Now, if you happen to be using flowers or things that need to be assembled, I am going to recommend that you do that first. And I'm going to add a little tiny bit of adhesive here. And watch what I'm going to do. And I'm going to add this here. Now I'm going to add a little adhesive here. And this now is going to go here on my stair step. I want to make sure that my card is going to be able to close. So it's very important that this is all going to work well when it's opened and it's shut. All right, so let's move over to our next piece. You remember one of these tulips? Well, I have another set of leaves that I cut out. And this is where my take your pick tool is going to come into play. Let's add a little adhesive here at the bottom. And I'm going to hook those onto here. And of course, glue dots would work equally as well. And then this one is going to go up here on this side. Now remember, the card is going to stair step, so don't worry about that not fitting. Now these last pieces are going to be a little bit more important. So let's start here with our other tulip. And this time when we put the adhesive on, we're going to build up. And here is why. Do you see how this area here is taller than here? So we have all this area to work with. Wouldn't this be fantastic for a photograph? I think it would be great. This would be a wonderful baby announcement for something totally different. I've got my navy flower here, and I've also got one of my leaves. So let's go ahead and let's attach this as well. Let's turn that over and add a little of adhesive here. And let's go ahead and put this over on this side. Now the extra adhesive here is actually going to be a godsend because it's actually going to hold everything down to that step. So don't let that intimidate you. And I'm going to add this one right about here. 
So it's going to come a little bit across my flower, just making sure that we're staying within our step. And then we have one more. And I've got this, this one here is the poppy. And I'm going to add a little adhesive here. And again, you can layer these. So you can have them come off the side or off the back or here near the top. And I did have an extra set of leaves, but I think that you get the idea. Now, I don't think a card is finished unless it has some bling. That's just my thing. So let's really play up these patterns. I'm going to bring in now the holiday rhinestones. And I love these for lots of reasons. But the main reason is you've got colors here for just about every project you're going to need. And because they have a beautiful rhinestone iridescent look to them, you're going to find that they're going to match colors that are slightly different than this. So they're really, really versatile. I'm going to take one of these larger ones. They've got glue dots already on the back. And I'm going to add one of those here. Now I'm going to talk to you in a second about the greeting for the inside of this card. So let's take a smaller one and I'm going to add that here to the center of this flower and another for the center of this flower. And I can't wait to show you these other fun folds. I think you're going to really fall in love with the stamp set as much as I have. Now what you can do here on the inside of the card is you can go ahead and you can stamp it or you can take it one step further, which is what I did. And I actually stamped it and punched it out or you can die cut. And I'm going to add this with dimensionals as well. So let's go ahead and grab a couple of those and let's add those here. We'll remove those backings. And then we're going to attach that here to the center of the card. Again, I love to use my grid paper for this because I don't do too many things straight. And this is going to help to ensure that I have this nice and straight. But here's the best part. You know what I love about this card? Look, you have a little bit of a 3D effect to this. And for those of you that are wondering how this is going to fit in an envelope, I did stamp myself a medium size. This is an A2 envelope because I knew I was going to have some doubters. And I'm going to run this right down inside of here. And you're going to have that ribbon here at the top. So I want to give you a couple little tips about this. What I like to do is either run it to the side, run it to the back. It's up to you before you seal it so that when they open it, obviously, they're going to be able to pull it straight out. So it's going to fit in here just famously. I'm trying not to pull that paper off. There we go. We've got our card. Now let me show you these other cards that I created all using this exact same bundle of products. Now I want to show them to you one more time. The bundle is called In Symmetry. So this is the stamp set and guess what? When I said bundle, it's because it has a coordinating, look at that, stem die. Isn't this fun? I am going to tell you that this will create a border and I also want you to know it is not symmetrical to these two images. I know you're probably thinking, really? It's not, I tried. So they're slightly different, but the shapes coordinate, which makes this fantastic to use. Now let me pull out those other cards that I promised to share with you. These are all going to be part of this month's card making class. And I know a lot of you are always looking forward to seeing these cards. And this month's card making class actually has an entire fun fold series thing to it. So all of the cards in this month's card class are going to be fun folds. So here's the first one. Look at the change on this one. So here's the fun fold for this. Really, really cute. I did add sunny sentiments to kind of just expound on this adorable stamp set. When you place a $50 product order in my online store using the exclusive host code for my card class, you are automatically going to receive a PDF tutorial. And my friends, it's 20 pages long for each of the cards. Oh, am I going to teach you about these? Listen, I don't know if you can hear it or not. It's a very thin magnet. So this is card number two. That PDF tutorial has step-by-step -step instructions. It has pictures. It has cutting dimensions and all the supplies for the cards. Please keep in mind, you can use whatever products that you'd want. So your qualifying order of $50 before tax and shipping could be anything that you'd like. And quite frankly, with a brand new mini catalog and of course celebration, which means you're going to get something for free for every $50 that you spend. I'm going to teach you this patchwork. Really fun. And you're probably wondering, well, how are you going to teach me that? Well, you're going to get a very extensive step-by-step -step video that comes with the PDF tutorial for this class. Now, it's very important that you use that exclusive card class host code that's down below. My card class is only available for a four-day ordering win window. After that, it is no longer available. So I want to make sure that you're aware of that. 
And then here is the last one. This is going to be card number six. This one has a really fun window on the front. Super duper cute, isn't it? It's such a great class. Now, I want to tell you a couple things about this month's class. It is a $50 product order using that exclusive house coat during that four-day window. You'll get this, the 20-page PDF tutorial. And guess what? I included a template for all six of those fun folds in addition to the full length video where you'll stamp with me at your own pace from home. Again, if you do not want the in symmetry, your order can be whatever you want and you can make your fun folds in any theme that you want. And if you'd like a head start on your Christmas cards, break out those Christmas stamps. This is a perfect time to get some really fun, inspiring projects. Now, those of you that are interested in the tutorial by itself, I do want to talk to you about that. It is available on my website at lisastampstudio.com. Click on classes and then down there you'll see PDF tutorial. I have a huge library of tutorials and I did put this one in there for you. I charge just $1 per page. That is for all the instructions. That is for the templates, the cutting dimensions, the whole bit. The video is not included. The video is exclusive to the card making class. I sure would love to have you join us this month. Fantastic cards that can be used with any stamp sets and quite a bit of versatility. The video is chock full of tips and tricks that don't just apply to these cards that you can use in all your card making. Now, a couple things that I wanna make sure that you are aware of. The first is when you head over to my website at lisastampstudio.com and you're new there, scroll down about halfway and you're gonna get a pop-up that asks you to join my free weekly e-newsletter. There you are able to subscribe for free and every Thursday you're gonna get a free tutorial not shared on any of my other platforms that I send to you in a no frills email. It's just free for the taking. We would love to have you sign up with us. In addition to that, make sure you check out that extensive PDF tutorial library. And do me a favor tonight, if you have enjoyed tonight's video, share it on social media, pin it to your Pinterest board, share it on Facebook. All those things help us immensely. And guess what? That thumbs up button helps us a ton here on YouTube if you would click that. Do me a favor, subscribe and click that little bell icon that's right next to that subscribe button and the word all because I'm coming back live with you on Monday, which is August 16th. I'm just checking my calendar at 8 p.m. Eastern time. You're not gonna wanna miss this next fun fold card. I've got several variations for you and I'm really excited to share. Thank you everyone for joining me tonight and thank you Gina for moderating and being here to answer questions. I look forward to seeing you then. Have a great evening everyone.